Are you an actuary with an entrepreneurial spirit? Did you ever want more than just a 9 to 5? Have you ever thought about starting your own business but never took action? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you're not alone. Many of us want to escape the corporate grind, but either give up too early or never even get started. So hopefully, in this video, you'll find some inspiration to get started and keep going. I spent the majority of my 20s working hard and advancing my corporate career. But throughout my decade-long journey, I never really found purpose in climbing the corporate ranks. To me, it was always a means to an end, and at some point I realized that the longer I waited, the harder it would be to escape. So a year and a half ago, I packed up my bags and told myself, I'm going to carve out my own path so that I can live the life I want. Now, I'm not here to tell you to quit your job tomorrow and dive into the unknown with no plan. If you're perfectly content working in a corporate environment, then more power to you. But also, this video isn't for you. This video is for anyone who has ever thought about starting their own business, but are faced with fear, uncertainty, or doubt. I have certainly been there myself. And while I can't say that I have achieved what I set out to achieve, I also realized that in the grand scheme of things, a year and a half is just a speck in time. As I continue to make progress day by day, I think about what keeps me motivated to keep pushing forward. And I realized many of the mindset habits I developed were actually from taking actuarial exams. So in this video, I want to share with you how the actuarial exams prepare you for starting your own business. But first, here are four reasons why actuaries tend not to pursue entrepreneurship in the first place. Number four, when you're taking exams, you're focused on studying for that exam. And when you're done with that exam, you're thinking about the next exam. So it's really hard to take a step back and think, what are you going to do after the exams? And when you're done with all the exams, there's that feeling of sunk cost if you just leave it all behind because you devoted thousands of hours and sacrificed countless weekends to get to the point that you got to. Reason number three, the profession comes with golden handcuffs. The opportunity cost of starting your own business is very high, especially if you're fully credentialed. There are so many perks that come along with being a fellow that diving into the unknown seems like a really irrational decision. Which leads me to reason number two, the profession attracts people who are risk averse. So if the thought of building something from scratch, failing over and over, facing rejection, putting out fires, questioning what the heck you're doing sounds miserable to you, an entrepreneurship may not be for you. But if any of that sounds exciting to you, then maybe starting your own venture is going to be worth it. And reason number one, you don't know what you would do or how you would get started. Actuarial exams and the profession itself don't really lend themselves to entrepreneurship because what we learn and what we do is built for a corporate setting with large business products. There's very little business to consumer. It's not like you can just get up and start your own insurance company. So those are four reasons why I think actuaries tend not to pursue entrepreneurial opportunities. But that doesn't mean that you don't have the skill set too. So here are five habits that you may already have as an actuary that translate directly to starting a business. Reason number one is consistency and long-term planning. When you're taking exams, even if you're not thinking about it day to day, you're planning for your future. You're delaying gratification. When you start a business, you're gonna have to delay a lot of gratification. The first couple of years are not gonna be gratifying. If you think about any skill that you have, it could be in a sport or a musical instrument or even your progress through the actual exams, how long did it take for you to become fluent in that skill? I'm willing to bet it wasn't a year or even two years, but with time and patience, you're eventually going to get good at it. It's the same thing with selling, building a product, building an audience. Habit number two is that you already hold yourself accountable when you study for exams. And the same applies to when you start a business, because nobody is going to hold you accountable. You need to manage your own time, you need to develop your own schedule, and you need to figure out what works for you on your own time. Habit number three is that you've experienced failure with the exams, and you know how to bounce back from failure. As an entrepreneur, you're going to fail a lot, and if you can't deal with failure, then this path is not for you. Habit number four, you already know how to spend a lot of time alone. When studying for exams, you're going to spend a lot of time alone, and that's the same case as an entrepreneur. When you're building products, it's usually going to be by yourself. Habit number five, you're already a lifelong learner, and you've kept your mind sharp by learning all the different topics on the actual exams. When you start a business, you're going to have to learn a lot of different things very quickly. And so being able to get through the exams gets you in the mindset of learning new things on a regular basis. So those are the five habits that you might already have as an actuary that translate directly into starting a business. 
Now, starting a business is going to take a lot more than just those five habits. The barrier of entry to building a product or a service is lower than it's ever been. And with AI evolving at the pace that it's evolving at, it only enables more and more people to be able to learn how to build products and to actually implement them. In this video, I didn't talk too much about my personal experience. So in the next video, I'm going to provide concrete examples of how I developed a platform over a year and a half so that you have concrete examples to follow. I also talk about some business ideas in the actuarial sphere. So if you've thought about starting something but don't really have an idea where to start, this can help you get started. If any of that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.